part two. I'm sorry, it kind of ended a little abrupt. There was somebody at the door. So anyway, my encouragement to you is this. Um, if you have a loved one that's getting ready to pass, first thing you need to do is surround yourself with Bible-believing people who can pray and intercede for that loved one. Because it's not this, they're going to just die and, oh, they're going to go to heaven, you know, because they were a good person. Um, because that's not how it works. That's not how it works. We don't go to heaven because we're a good person. Remember, um, we are measured by the ability to follow the law 100%. So you have to ask yourself, is your loved one um, following the letter of the law 100% and with, is without sin? If your loved one has not followed the letter of the law 100% without sin, um, they have no ability to stand before God and say, I've been a good person, and so let me, let me be in your presence. Nope, that's not going to work. God will say in his grace and, and love, I've made so many opportunities for you on earth to cry out. The Bible just says, call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. In 94 years, my dad couldn't say, I want you. I need you. I'm in need of a savior. He couldn't cry out one time in 94 years. And my mom, I know some of you, this is hard to hear because you might think I'm being harsh, but this is reality, folks. My mom thinks he's going to go to heaven because he's been a good person. My dad, I will say, is a better person than a lot of Christians. He's a very um, honorable man. He He has high standards. He's He's kind, he's good-hearted, he's all of these things, but none of those things is going to allow him to stand before God except the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ. And um, so I say to my dad and I say to others out there that are like that, if you've had no interest in God your entire life, why on earth would you expect to be with him after your life ends? Why? Why would you even remotely think that you're going to go before God and be in heaven? The only other place for you is what you've chosen on earth, is you've chosen to separate yourself from the living God. You've, you've chosen to be separated from him here on earth. So when you die, you have already made your choice to be separated fr from him from eternity. That makes no sense to me. Why would you do that? Why would you choose to be separated from love, joy, kindness, patience? Why? Why would you be choosing that? What you need to realize is that in order for you to be in the presence of the living God, who loves you, by the way, all you have to do is recognize your sinful nature and say, Father, I am in need of a Savior. I can't, I have no ability to stand before you and say, oh, I've followed the letter of law 100% and I'm per perfectly flawless and have no sin. If you think you've had no sin, um, give one day and God will show you that you've sinned. Um, you've never lost your temper, a foul word has never come out of your life, you've never stolen or cheated or thought somebody lower than you. You see a homeless person, yeah, that stupid bum, he needs to get up and work for a living. None of this has ever crossed your mind. These are just small sins. When we think of sins, we're like, well, God, I never killed anybody, and I never committed this sin, or I didn't do this sexual immorality. Those, that's not what is going to stand in your favor. So I encourage you today, if you're listening, I know this is long, but it's very, very well needed. And sometimes I can get a little repetitious and I really forgive you. For, please forgive me for that. But the bottom line is um, we want our loved ones to be in the presence of God. And in order for them to be in the presence of God, we have got to make them aware of the need for the presence of God, not only on this, this earth, but once they pass on, so I pray right now for my father and others that are out there. You might be dealing with a loved one who's lost, who doesn't know the Lord. You may be listening to this and you have Christians in your family that you just think are fruit loops and like, oh, they're crazy people. I don't, you know what? Put all that aside for a minute 
And let me pray for you, okay? Father, I come before you and I thank you that we have a living God that we can come to with our needs. And I lift all these people up that are listening to this and I ask you, Father, I pray for a revelation about the living God into their lives and their loved ones. Lord, help them if they are believers to be able to articulate the gospel in a way that helps people understand. I pray that they would show love to their family members and not cram it down their throat. I know that sometimes we get so excited because we we get fearful. I don't want to, I don't want to lose my father. I want my father to be with me in eternity. I don't want him to be separated from the living God because I choose to be near God. I would choose to be in the presence of God. So I don't want my dad to be so far from me in heaven that I can't have access to him either. And it breaks my heart because that is not who my dad is. And I know deep down in his heart, he's not a man that wants to be around evil, wickedness, and darkness the rest of eternity. So, Lord, I lift up all these people that are listening to him, and I pray that you would make it real to them that heaven is real. It's not the Hollywood version. It's not the La La Land version. It's heaven is virtually living in your presence, and hell is living apart from your presence. That's the bottom line that boils down to that. We're either going to be in your presence or never in your presence and a distant. So Lord, I just come before you and I stand in the gap and I ask you to work on the behalf of those people that are listening, that stir the hearts of those that are um, in their lives to desire you, to question, to, to think about their future, to say to themselves, when I die, where am I going to go? Am I going to go to this oblivious realm that nobody knows about or talks about and, and might not even see one another? How hogwash. Are we just going to return to the earth and be nothing? Hogwash. Ridiculous. We have a living soul within us that's going to continue on. These earthly bodies will fall to the ground and die. But, by, but your word says that a new body is going to be created for our spirit to dwell in. And that one is going to be imperishable. It will not die. And we will be in your presence. And I today choose to be in your presence now and in eternity. And those that are listening, I pray you choose the same thing. You choose to be in God's presence, not just when you die, but here on earth. Get into a church. Get into a church and start learning about God. I don't care if you have to do what I did. I went to a different church every Sunday for a year. And ask God to show me, which church do you want me to be in? Just because you walk into a church doesn't mean that's where you need to be. That might be not the church for you. Or you walk in there and you go, I don't like these people. I don't like the vision they have. Oh, go, go find one that you do. Stop making excuses. This is ridiculous. Stop making excuses. No church is perfect. No vision is perfect. These people are seeking God. That's more than you can say about yourself sitting at home. Okay, I love football more than anybody else, but I tell you, God comes before football, and I want to be in his presence, and I want to learn who he is, I want to grow with who he is, I want him dwelling in me, and when I die, I want to be in his presence. I don't want to be separated from him, I don't want to hear the words, depart from me, I never knew you. Are you going to hear that? Depart from me, I never knew you? I hope not. So I encourage you today, be blessed. This is a strong word, but it's been needing to be said, and it's dealing with the potential death of my father right now that stirred all this up and brought this up, and the conversation I've had with my family. And my cousin's uh, father, I mean, my cousin's husband's father just passed away, and and many people are wishing him well and saying he's in heaven and this and that. And, and I don't know him personally, so I don't know the, the, the truth of that. But when somebody dies, it makes us to question and wonder, you know, where are they and what did they do? I think it's easy because we want people to feel good and we want to just say, oh, he's in heaven. God bless you. He's in heaven. Not always so. In many cases, not. That's why... The the phrase going around Facebook right now is, that is why there's a highway to hell and only a stairway to heaven. Basically what that means is the scripture says the road to God is very, very small and very few people find it. 
but the road to hell is so wide and it swallows people up. It's wide. So make sure you're not on the wide, wide path and, and fooling yourself into thinking that you're on the path to God. Amen and accept the sacrifice Jesus made for you, all right? God bless.